Hello everybody, it's a City Man Haven here again. Today, you know, this is probably the most I've uploaded in a while. I'm, I'm actually not minding it. You know, each each time I get home, I'll take a shower, I'll do my things, and I'll get some stuff ready. I talked to a couple of people in Discord today talking about what tank I should do, and uh, one that came to mind was the 268 version 4. So, today is going to be a day that we're going to be checking out the 268 version 4. There's a lot of people that talk badly about this tank, and personally, I don't know why. It's an all-around good tank. If there's one thing that would make it better, uh, it would be power to weight. Increasing its power to weight from whatever it's at right now. I can't remember off the top of my head. Speaking of which, I could literally just scroll down right here and go 850, so 11.33. Uh, PC variant, we are looking at... I'll actually bring you guys with me. Okay, so PC variant, we're going to be looking at 18. So 1,350 from the uh, 850 that we have here. And that power to weight bonus without changing, the, well, actually increasing top speed to 50. Honestly, we probably don't need to see the 50 top speed, but the overall like power to weight increase to 18 would just make it like fly. In all honesty, if they really wanted to for console, they could bump it down to like... 38 top speed, but they give it the 18 power to weight, helping you maintain that top speed, making it feel a lot more reliable. Plus, it would also make it to where you're actually using the full traverse speed a lot of the time. Speaking of which, PC traverse speed. Reverse speed, 18. Console reverse speed, we're looking at 18. That's nice. Uh, traverse, traverse, traverse. Hard, medium, soft. Uh, tank traverse, 23 almost. So it's actually not... It's not much different. We're pretty on point with that. A little bit of a debuff here with a 0.9 gun, but 0.9 is not too bad. Terrain resistance, 1.1. 1 .1, uh, yeah, 1.2, 1.4, 2.3. Not bad. Uh, all around, though, the only thing about this tank that really brings it down is that power to weight. And honestly, I would love to see them buff this tank and bring it back up to par. Or honestly, bring it up to par because they gave the IS-7 the speed bonus, which made that tank absolutely phenomenal. And then, yeah, just a couple of things, really. This is one of the tanks that I think they should focus on. Other than that, let's go ahead and take a look into the crew setup here that I'm going to be running with this. It's my standard, you know, Russian heavy tank crew. This is not a tank destroyer that can rely on concealment. It doesn't have the greatest uh, still concealment. We're looking at uh, 348, which is decent concealment. You can get 348 down to, like... I'd say maybe 280-ish, which is a decent amount of concealment for still concealment. But they have a moving concealment you have to consider and everything else you have to consider. And overall, this tank doesn't, in my opinion, you don't play this like a concealed heavy. I play really aggressive inside this tank, which is the reason why I'm using a power terrain to increase the power to weight. Along with a toolbox to keep the tracks and repairs coming up, to, up as much as we can. Uh, along with that, coming over here, let's go ahead and head back over to the armor viewer. This is against itself, so let's actually compare it to, let's say, a tier 10 heavy tank. Let's go uh, 113 would be a good choice, but it's not the one we want. We want to go standard. So 258 standard pin, 340 heat pin, uh, 258 standard pin. You're looking at very tiny lip on the upper hull, which really any um, elevation above the 268 version 4, and you're going to pin it. But if 268 is using any gun depression, you're going to struggle going through this all over the place with standard runs, except for the hatch. Very tiny hatch on the right side. Lower plate down below, 85 millimeters if it's exposed. And then against heat rounds, well, this thing starts to suffer just a tad bit. But it's all about using your armor, using your mobility, and catching people out and trying to force them to shoot other places. But if you're going against this, you're going to be loading heat. Just aim for the top plate the entire time. Against standards, they'll bounce. And then against heat, the top plate, it'll pretty much always go through. Other than that, let's go ahead and uh, jump into some matches. All right, Hidden Village, not a bad start off. So for anyone wondering, uh, your penetration on this gun, you're looking at 293 standard, 360 on your premium round, 90 millimeters of penetration on your high explosive. Along with that, you're looking at 650 damage across the board for your AP and your heat. And then your high explosive, you're looking at 840 millimeters. So one thing about this gun, it has 960 shell velocity, which I do find to be really nice in this gun because it just it's 960 across the board so every single round in this is consistent and learning to play it you learn where you need to aim you keep track of the time and then just you can switch to any round so if you got lightly armored targets trying to run you know the lead time it's easy to take it, in, it it's easy to just to take it into account um the way that i like to play this tank my crew loadout more than likely 
We're looking at off-road driving, um, clutch braking, situational awareness is guaranteed with 360, 370 base view range, not 360, and uh, uh, quite a few. So track mechanic, that's kind of a standard brothers uh, born leader, brothers in arms. I, I hate the fact that they changed names on a ton of stuff. But yeah, just we'll go over to crew after this match, and then we'll take a look at that as well. I'm beating him up at today. Let's actually just go ahead and dive into some gameplay here. EBR 90s down low, CS 63, Centurion 71. This is also my first match of the day, so fingers crossed that this goes well. Hopefully it goes better than yesterday. Yesterday's IS-5 was not exactly the greatest. Then again, the IS-5 in general, which is like, ooh. It's a tank that could be better, but it's not. Got so many other tanks in the same category that I match it. But the 268 version 4, this is a one of a kind. And it just surprises me that you don't see a whole lot of people playing it. Dispersion values on the gun, however, it does like to play against you quite a bit at 0.42. It is a 152mm though, so you get a lot of overmatch that you can throw out. Plus you got 55mm of top armor, so you can really pull on people and get some stuff out. And tracks plus turret damage on him. Um, you know what, let's actually... No, I just thought about it, that's a bad play. I was thinking maybe I can play aggressive, but uh, I don't see that happening too well. Plus, with your gun, you're capable of blocking shells as well with it. It is 70mm thick, so it can absorb 155, so it can absorb Death Stars. There's quite a bit that it can absorb. However, Centurion AVREs, we all love those right now in game, because it's literal, just constant HE splash. HE this, HE that. AVREs make the game balanced, fun, and dynamic. Don't forget it. Same thing about Tyrants. We all love Tyrants. 675. Uh, actually, high rolling. It's a lot better than the Arachi, where the big boy gun didn't see any high rolls. So let's see if we can try and peek in beta shell. Beautiful. That's an E4. Thank you, armor. Never play against it. Kind of hoping that we get over Metro Stop. I'm actually going to go ahead and start loading in the heat rounds right here, because, uh, you know, the E4 buff that they did two years ago is uh, awesome. We all love that. Alright, Centurion AVRE is not spotted anymore. There we go. I guess we can try and just beta shell. E4 doesn't have any heat rounds. Uh, the grill does, though. AVRE. We all love it. Alright. Uh, this flank's falling apart a little bit. Back section. Actually, I think, um, taking on the motion might be a good place, so we can pull up on top of the hill here. And then move up around the back side. So we can go for an ammo rack. 360 heat pin is definitely awesome, though. Well, you think angling your turret against this is going to help? Telling you now, it's not. <laughs> yeah, 360 uh, penetration on that is absolutely outrageous. And as you can see, he bounced off the front in the CS. Honestly, the team fell apart up in the top section, but then again, that's kind of how Hidden Village goes a lot of the time. You don't have enough tanks going up high, you have some heavies that will go down low, and then you get overwhelmed. And then Centurion AVREs, yeah, we all know how it's going right now. By the way, I just noticed this. How do you guys think the tier 8s inside this match fill? I bet they are ecstatic that they played this match. Like, completely best matchmaking you've ever seen. Look at that. Love it. One tier eight per team against nothing but nines and tens. Majority tens. They're having fun. All right, Pearl River. This should probably go a lot better. I think it might go um, either mid or far left. The right side inside this tank would actually play against it because of our view range and the fact that we're not using any concealment. So yeah, I think mid will be a good play. Oh yeah, I'm speed. Move grill. Speaking of which, with that 11.33 power to weight, um, you can't really go head to head and push your targets and take control of the close quarter situations, which is kind of the biggest thing about this tank. Uh, it, it likes to get close, but without that power to weight, you can't exactly control the way the engagement is going to flow. Even though your tank 
weighs 75, you know, it's 75 tons. So it's, it's kind of like you have all this extra stuff behind it, 75,000 pounds, and you just, you can't control it because whenever you ram a target, it's just going to fall apart. I guess we're going to go far left because I'm going to be a Muppet and not even think about it. I'm just driving places. Oh, it's you, Scan. Beyond a beef. All right, let's, let's see if we can actually uh, rock together. This would be pretty nice. 705As are actually really strong tanks. Haul down, they are extremely difficult to pin. You find a 705A haul down, you're better off trying to flank it or uh, get really aggressive and hope that you can take control of the situation without falling apart. They are tough SOBs. All right, see if anything comes up on the left. And... We're spotted, T57, hello, how are you? 577, that's a good hit. You know what, let's actually go ahead and get aggressive right here. The leopard one on the right. See, if we had advanced reload, I would actually probably... No, high explosive against leopard one would struggle. Unless we manage to catch his rear. Let's take a hard left and then pull in to get a better... Snap, 624, that's a good hit tree just got knocked down towards us, which means that we have another person pulling in. Let's go ahead and see if we can spot him out. It's an M60 with a heat round straight through the weak, literal weak spot whenever you're side scraping inside this tank. M60's got 350 heat, heat pins, so we want to be a little bit careful against this. I guess we'll just peek it, and if he tries to pull, we'll put one into him. Honestly, trading with this is not too bad either. 650 Alpha does make a big difference. Alright, we're going to hold here for a little bit longer. Oh, I missed my chance. Not going to pre-fire. If anything, I'll actually keep track of the T-57. We'll see if some shells fly. There's a blue. That might have come from the Leopard 1, not the uh, M60. Let's actually apply a little bit of pressure here. He's going to pre-fire. That's a little bit of a panic shot. And you're right here. If we would have had that power to wait and we're bouncing. I hate relying on the um, auto-aim feature. It never works out the way you want it to. It always plays against. If you actually have the opportunity, aim in and take the shot yourself. Because that is the best way to do it. Um, I don't see this working out too well. 18 reverse speed is really nice. Uh, I think best bet would be to try and get hauled down on top of the hill there. Because if we pull on this side... Uh, we're going to end up in a situation where our right side is exposed. So, like, if we pull into the left side there, we're not going to be in a super healthy situation. So, we'll see if we can handle this. So far, we're alone. So, in a 5A, kind of pushed up a little bit too far. He would have been better off sitting back and just being a little bit patient and waiting. And he broke our gun. We're actually just going to go ahead and start loading in the heat rounds here. T-57, and he broke our gun again. At least we know the gun's able to absorb. I don't want to get caught out right here, so if we get the opportunity, we're going to back up a little bit more. Last thing I want, though, is to have that uh, T-57 come up on our side. So we're going to jam out the M60. The opportunity to take down the T57, that's exactly what we're gonna do. Sim 60's in a little bit of a panic state. He's also doing the auto aim thing that we were doing too. We have him right where we want him. Let's hopefully hold him here. Can't help but laugh at this. It's a lot of auto aiming. It's okay, I did the same. All right, this is not going to go well. But the thing is that auto-aiming, as you can see, for him, it's not working out too well. That was a lot of it. This thing is basically like anti-auto-aim, it feels like. Just because your top armor, a lot of the time, the one of you auto-aim on targets, it likes to lock onto a center position. So, for instance, locking onto this tank, it actually locks to the gun underneath the gun. 
So a lot of the shots you saw that were hitting were actually hitting the top armor there. That's 55 millimeters. And uh, that's why you don't want to use auto aim because a lot of tanks, it's not properly assigned. For instance, I think the best example is you guys can go into a customs game, lock onto a UDES, tier 8 Swedish tank destroyer from the tech tree. You'll lock onto the rear of it. And uh, from front, that is completely fine. But when we're shooting it from the side, if you're locked onto it like that, you are never going to hit the tank because of the latency in game and their travel speed. It'll always play against you every single time. Speaking of which, this match was not exactly, I'd say, standout-ish. I guess it was okay, the M60. I didn't play this match too well myself, but it is what it is. The ammunition count inside this tank, though, I'm not a big fan of it. You don't get a whole lot of ammo, plus you have a really fast reload for what it is. 12.6 seconds. And then, as I'm being a Muppet, trying to find out how much ammunition we have again. 30 rounds of ammo. Well, I guess 30 rounds is a decent amount, but... It, it doesn't feel like a whole lot inside this tank. And that snapshot in the Jagger, I'm a little bit surprised that I landed that. Uh, you know what? I actually kind of feel like an HE would be okay right here. Maybe not. We're going to switch back to Heat because he's going to be turning around on us. And decent pull. Honestly, they could just leave the top speed the way that it is, but give it the power to weight increase. We're still detected from the Brigetto in the city. Be a little bit careful against the T95 here. Don't want to over pull. We should be able to pin him right through the frontal because it's only 305. That wasn't too bad. A de decent match. I mean, the, the area I went into could have been played a lot better. Uh, four kills, 4,216 damage. Not bad. 268 version 4. Made some silver the match too. Block 3900, still wall, first class mastery. I'm a little bit surprised about the first class. It did not feel like a first class at all. Uh, that's surprising. And then, yeah, 7 5 a Ah, beef. Aw. Oh. Kind of wish I was there to support him, but we had the Leopard 1 on the right and then the M60 as well. Kind of happy I did the backup play because I didn't know if anything was going to pull around my right side. And Swamp. Have you guys played on Swamp yet? I, mean, I don't know how I feel about the map coming back. I mean, it's a decent map, but the whole kill 20 million opponents and yada yada yada, it's like, yeah, sure, make us earn a map that was already in-game that you took away and then make us earn it. I mean, don't get me wrong, like, um, from what I hear, they added at the moment 20 million kills was broken. Was it kills? I think kills was the only way to score points towards it. I, I think it was kills. Could be wrong, though. I didn't, actually didn't read the uh, challenge up for it, because I, I didn't really care. Just because it's going to get complete either way. But putting a challenge behind it, trying to get hype, there was no hype. Like, I didn't hear anyone talk about it. Like, oh, Swamp's coming back. Oh, I'm so excited. Yay, Swamp. It, it should have just been here. Same thing about a lot of the other maps. Don't get me wrong. The devs are putting in a lot of work, and they're trying to get stuff up and running and get things back in the game that they've essentially taken out to rework on. Honestly, Swamp looks really good. However, the foliage amount, there's a decent amount on Swamp. There's a lot more on Swamp than there is on Prokhorovka, that's for sure. Which is a bit, you know, disconcerting to me, because Prok should have a crap ton of bushes on it. And uh, whenever you play in Swamp, it seems like there's a lot more. And for anyone that's, um, you know, interested, these trees right here, knock them down as you're coming up if you're moving with a team. Because it will allow your heavy tanks to pull up in here without getting detected from the cross. So keep that in mind. If you're going to be inside light tanks or medium tanks and you're coming up here, knock down a couple of trees if you got a couple of guys you're platooning with, like people in heavies. Makes it a little bit easy. Yeah, and 30 rounds of ammunition. Let's see what we can do here. Pulling up to the top. Another thing is load an HE round, blow this tree, knock it down this way, and uh, you can probably pull on it pretty safe. Do 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 boop. <laughs> Love it. Because you can do some easy pulls in this because a lot of people totally forgot how to work the armor. Right here, he's going to see that lower plate. He's going to think he can pin it, but he's not going to be able to. So we just, we essentially baited a shell, giving us time to, you know, put in our reload and force him to fire to allow us to line up a shot. Actually, what I should do is move a little bit to the right here. Prompt myself about right there, and then I'll be a lot harder to pin. Lower plate's not exposed. Shouldn't be exposed. Yep. Hatch is a little bit covered too with the rock on the right side, but he's going to drop down because he's 
probably like, I don't want to take that on. That is a version 4. That's just a lot of problems waiting to happen. I'm just going to load a HE in right here and then pull up on that top. Actually, no, back to heat. Back to heat. Can someone spot out that? Let's go need a target and then I'll mark the map where he was. We'll see if anyone's willing to pull on that 279E. I actually think sitting right here is a good idea because he's going to pull. Probably spot him out. SU-122, that's a six second reload. Here we go. Let's lock on. This Amorak should be right there. Let's see if we can hammer this out. Back Amorak, we're going to go in for the front. This should pin kind of a 50-50 at this angle, but we'll see. There we go, 649. Down the two hit points. Nice. I do like to take a little bit more heat inside of my 268 version 4 just because... Sure, the standard rounds with 293 is really nice to have, but that 360 heat pin with a lot of the ways that you're fighting inside the sink, getting in close, and so far I haven't seen any maps that I can really do it, except for Pearl River, but, you know, Centurion AVREs are kind of decimating the uh, matches right now, and it's really difficult to pull against HE spam, especially whenever I can only hit them for 650 every single 12.8 seconds, and they can hit me for 1,400 or 1,200, 1,100 if they shoot my hatches every single 18. So the damage ratio right there is way off. Uh, speak of the devil, and he shall appear. It's the turn of your 705 machine. One thing is, though, with the 152, you have a lot of overmatch that you're capable of. And that's what really makes this thing stand out in the version 4. Just all that overmatch that you can get out. Want to be real careful because of that guy. We got a Fosh. Fosh might be trying to pull. I think we're going to stop the Fosh. So we'll do a really hard pull in the Fosh right here. Let him know, hey, I'm here. How you doing? Put a heat round through the M60. Absorb a shell into our tracks. Back off a little bit. We're going to use a little bit of terrain. We only have five degrees of gun depression. So the goal is to... Uh, we go. He's going for the tracks. He's going to take his time trying to find a shot. Really wants to hatch. We're going to hit his tracks. You know what? That was actually a good pull on my part for the Fosh. It is 2 to 12 right now, which is not healthy. I do believe the Fosh is on reload, so I'm not really worried about him. Set the Patton. We're going to put a shell down range. Time to pull forward. I don't want to get shot in the rear. Oh, 112. This really shows off the armor frontally, though. You know, if his barrel blocks my shot, I will be surprised. But it's not going to matter because we're going to get overwhelmed. Yeah, a lot of people right now don't know how to play Swamp. There's a lot of positions on this map that you can easily lock down. Um, for instance... The right side of the map that fell apart, don't push in to the castle if you're going to be holding that side. You actually have a lot of way better hold down positions at the back of the map. And then you just get a scout to pull up and do a couple of bushes up front. And you can actually spot everyone trying to come down and have them all in the open for your back line fire that's all hauled down behind you. It actually makes the map a lot better to play. You know... I think whenever I start to do my lightly armored tanks and I start picking lightly armored tanks, I'm going to end up on all of the close quarter maps. For instance, I'm going to pull out like an LTG, end up against tier 9s on Himmelsdorf. I got the feeling that's going to happen. I love the LTG. It's been a long time since I played it, but it's got really good concealment for its tier and makes it really hard to spot out. You can get some really nasty scout games inside that. Speaking of which, my goal is, um, over the next couple of weeks, is to get matches recorded of positions on maps to show off some things that you guys can do to help kind of make a difference inside light tanks, even make a difference inside medium tanks, and show off some of the stronger positions that I like to take that not a lot of people even know about, let alone is used in comp. Because I'm someone who will, will literally risk it for the biscuit in a lot of games just to try a position inside of a public queue match. So we'll go around inside custom games, we'll test camo values in certain positions for normal positions that people like to rush to and positions that you can get to early game to actually get the additional spotting and without being detected back. And even if you wanted to, you could passive scout. On, on Melanovka here, there's actually a bush right here in G3. It's a big bush. 
and I actually parked a uh, Lanson C inside of it. It is that bush right there. I parked my Lanson C inside there. You can spot everyone coming around here. Oh, it's actually um, G4. Yeah, but you can spot everyone coming on this side. You can even catch a couple of people out on the hill if they don't have enough concealment rating on top of that hill. And no joke, it took until I was last man standing, until I was spotted, and it required someone to get within 120 meters of me. So, yeah, really strong position right there. I've been wanting to try it out for a while, but never did, because not a lot of light tanks like to play inside this field here. Normally you'll see light tanks take the back section, or you'll see them kind of cut through here to try and get the spotting. But it is what it is. Uh, I do believe I am spotted from hill right here, so I want to be a little bit careful. Yep, the hill, and that was an AP round from the Arnie, more than likely. You can tell the difference from the rounds, because APCR is red, AP is white, and then uh, heat is blue, and high explosives are yellow. So seeing a uh, white round come in, that's a 264 standard pin AP round from the Iron Arnie. Is it 264? Actually, I can't remember off the top of my head if it's 264 or not. I do want to say this, though. 264, not bad. 650 alpha, though, so far. I haven't seen any 700 high rolls. Time I've been playing it. Doesn't mean it's bad. It just means that uh, currently RNG is playing against me, and it has been for the past couple of days. Um, you know what? Let's actually cut it in the left and try and play a little bit of haul down and get out of the sight of right. Type 5 is a little scary. I might need to load the heat rounds here in a minute, but we'll see what we can do with standards for the time being. We've got a big old juicy hatch. We're going to bounce. I'm actually just going to swap in the heat right now. And yep, there's the hill. Type 5 seems like he's exposed. I don't want to risk it though. It's a bat chat. Hello, T49. 737. As I'm talking about it, there's a high roll. Just required me to mention it for the RNG. Be like, oh, he got onto us. Quickly fix it. Type 5's got a broken gun. Let's actually take the time in the shell here. We're not spotted. We're going to put a heat round through his turret. 360 heat pin is just amazing. And then the reload this thing has and the armor it has to offer. Now, a lot of people diss in this tank just because of the way the hatch is built and then the speed and everything else, but honestly, if they ever get this thing to power to weight bump, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Hey, a 693, another high roll. Okay, I'm just going to say need target. Kind of want to spot out the hill. Uh, is that a 4... One, yeah, it's a 430. If he was running a concealment crew, he would have um, 264 still concealment, which is actually the really good range for mediums. And trying it out, you'd actually be able to pull on that light tank if you really wanted to. And a Borask. See, in the right here, the high explosives having that uh, same travel speed. If you're using advanced reload, you'd be able to swap in the one and hit it. But I'm just going to throw a heat round down range. Heat shells. If you want to pull into the drop, we'll lead your drop. Honestly, the AP at 293 is really good on this tank, and then the 360 heat pin, and just all-round effectiveness, this tank has got amazing penetration all around. Then again, it is a TD, and it should have amazing penetration all around. Alright, might want to be a little bit careful here. Hill is still a problem, that 430 doesn't want to pull. He probably doesn't have a camo crew because he's getting spotted just to make pulls right here. In all honesty, you guys, if you have the 430, do, don't use a gun rammer on it. Use a camouflage net. Because a gun rammer doesn't benefit that tank at all. You go from a 5.4 second to a 6 second reload with 390 damage. So, is that 0.6 seconds really worth it? You're still in the 6 second margin. You can still permanently track people and they're still using um, toolbox. And even if they're using toolbox, that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to perma track them with 5.4 seconds. Because, I mean, you're literally talking about a repair speed of like 3 point something seconds. So personally, I would drop the gun rammer on that and go camouflage net in the 430. Ooh. Okay. 430U, absolute monster of a tier 8. Basically just a pocket heavy. You know, let's actually load an HE on the machine. Let's see if we can get that 840 alpha. 
do have a big juicy side shot from the pull it. We gotta get there before the AVRE. Oh no, AVRE. Oh no. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is so ridiculous how much damage that thing does. I can't believe that they put it in the game like that. It can literally change the entire encounter. It's got the speed, it's got mobility, it's got everything to offer. I've been in a situation like this before. I'm just going to cap the base. See ya. I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but that one kind of hurt. That was my neck. Hello, I'm spotted, but I am not the one that you are seeking. You need to seek someone else. Actually, I'm just going to do a hard pull on the left. See if we can use our armor and view range. Our very minimal amount of view range, that is. Hello, Death Star. You can overmatch my top armor. You scare me. 50 seconds, 22 on the counter. No, we're just going to blind shot right there. Providing some scouting here. Don't get me wrong, Death Star's got a really good turret. You gotta try and find that flat bar right on top of it if you wanna pin it. If you're loading AP. Flat bar was about right there. It's okay though, there's uh, 19 seconds left on cap and we're gonna lose this because of cap. We didn't have enough people push up to scout and prevent. That is completely fine though. Oh, balanced. 268 version 4. Defeat. Yes, 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 I know. Thank you. Oh, what is that? Shell proof? Nice. Scoreboard? Uh, not bad. Levered PTA actually did some really good scouting. Chisel did some really good scouting. Uh, 430 could have been absolutely amazing at scouting, but if you're not, if you're not using camouflage net, you're not playing the tank properly in my opinion. So there is that. Alrighty, you guys. Well, uh, I don't like making these things last a whole long time, but it is what it is. Honestly, I could sit around, play this tank for, I don't know, 10, 12, 30 matches and pick like the best 10 games and then pick like the best three games of that and then show off this tank in absolute best scenarios. But to give you guys like a real live response to how the tank performs in multiple situations, plus with Swamp barely coming back and no one really knowing how to play that map, it's a... Uh, eh. I also forgot to put camo on it, but yeah, it's fine. I'm not worried about it. Um, other than that, you guys, uh, thank you for jumping in. I see my camera's doing like this weird thing. Like it doesn't know what lighting to choose because uh, I got a really weird light inside my room. It's probably from like 2005, hasn't died on me in forever. So I don't see a point in changing it. Uh, I got key lights though that I use and I should probably turn those on and turn off my main light because that just looks weird. Oh well, you guys, 268 version 4, it's not a bad tank. I think it's actually really amazing and I'd love to see it get some love. Other than that, you guys have a great day, afternoon, night. I'm going to just turn this off before someone gets epilepsy on me because of the freaking, oh my gosh, that is like, Jesus. You guys have a great night. I'm out of here.